There are two clubs that have become synonymous with sheer dominance in baseball over the last five seasons, at least in the NL. From August 31st to September 3rd, the Los Angeles Dodgers welcomed the Atlanta Braves to Chavez Ravine for a four game set. I was lucky enough to go to every game and I can honestly say that nobody wins more than baseball fans when these two teams lock horns. This year, however, the matchup of the two best teams in the National League brings us a storyline that's bigger than the individual games themselves. Since both teams are absolutely running away with their divisions, the focus turns to an individual matchup. Dodgers right fielder, second baseman, shortstop, and general Swiss Army knife Mookie Betts against Braves right fielder and offensive spark plug Ronald Acuna Jr. Betts and Acuna are both in the middle of historic seasons, and both have very equal claim to be the 2023 NL MVP. Heading into the matchup, Mookie Betts had already tied his career high in home runs while playing very good defense and leading the Dodger lineup on a nightly basis. He was also among the league's best in OPS, RBI, WRC+, and leads the NL in F4. You can probably guess who leads the entirety of Major League Baseball in F4. It's that Otani guy. Acuna, on the other hand, entered the series one home run away from doing something that has never been done in the history of Major League Baseball. Two years removed from tearing his ACL in Miami, Ronald Acuna Jr. stood on the brink of becoming the first player in Major League Baseball history to record a 30 home run, 60 stolen base season. And in the City of Angels, the Braves superstar provided a show unlike any other. With the bases loaded, Acuna demolished a fastball from Lance Lynn into the left center field seats. History books? Make room for Ronnie Baseball. The first 30-60 season in history, and I'm one of the lucky 50,000 or so who got to witness history. But of course, Acuna's slam couldn't go unmatched by Betts, who hit not one, but two home runs, driving in four, and scoring another in the first of four games. The first game of the series was a wild affair that the Braves narrowly won 8-7, thanks to closer Rysel Iglesias getting Kike Hernandez to strike out on a nasty slider with a winning run on first base. Advantage? Atlanta. Friday night's game was less about the MVP matchup and more about the homecoming for LA native and Braves ace Max Freed. Though he's missed significant time this year due to injury, Freed looked as sharp as he ever had in his career, tossing seven shutout innings with 10 punchouts. Home cooking really does wonders. But the Dodgers wouldn't just lie down, and in a 6 0 game, Colton Wong launched a three run home run into the night in his Dodger debut. But the Braves bullpen stood firm and closed out game two of the series 6 3. Acuna launched his 31st homer of the year, whereas Betts went hitless in Game 2. For Braves fans, Game 3 had all the makings of another disappointing late innings loss. Acuna recorded the third hardest hit home run of the StatCast era, a 121.2 mile an hour shot off of Emmett Sheehan. Acuna's homer, his third straight game with a bomb, was all the offense the Braves could muster in regulation. But by the same token, they were able to keep the Dodgers to just one run themselves. Betts also struggled in Game 3, striking out three times and going hitless for the second night in a row. Extra inning games since 2020, the advent of the Ghost Runner rule, have almost overwhelmingly favored the home team. And when Nicky Lopez stood on second base to start the 10th, I felt a pit in my stomach that was all too common until that point. Enter Orlando Arcia. The all-star starting shortstop, and probably the most overlooked player on the team heading into the season, showed up when his team needed him most. With two on and two out, Arcia launched a go-ahead three-run blast off Dodger lefty Alex Vesia, giving the Braves a 4-1 lead. I remember the guy sitting behind me saying that Arcia was the guy you'd want to face in that situation. It took every ounce of restraint that I had not to turn around and just smile at him after the homer. The Braves would hang on to win 4-2 in yet another close game. In a moment that Braves and Atlanta sports fans in general have come to expect as a moment of failure, Arcia flipped the script and conjured up a moment of magic for the Braves. They secured the series win with one game left and had the opportunity to sweep the Dodgers in a four game series in their building. By all accounts, Dodgers Stadium is a fortress and it takes a lot to be the Dodgers at their house. But the Braves did just that. Whatever happened Sunday would just be icing on the cake. But Sunday's game is part of what has separated the Dodgers from most of Major League Baseball since their most recent renaissance. Their pitching development is among the best in the league and year after year, they keep churning out impressive talents like Bobby Miller. Behind seven stellar innings from their prized rookie, the Dodgers salvaged the final game of the series 3-1. They finally kept Acuna from homering, and Betts recorded three of the Dodgers' 11 hits on their way to avoiding a sweep. The most hyped up series to that point, which weirdly wasn't nationally televised at all, lived up to every bit of it, and then some. Acuna and Betts went to work for their teams, and though the Braves came out victorious, the MVP race is still as tight as ever. 
The two MVP candidates ended the series about as evenly as possible. Acuna had six hits in four games, while Betts had five. Acuna had three home runs, while Betts hit two. Anyway you slice it, the four days in LA lived up to the hype. Here's the thing about the MVP race though. As it is the Baseball Writers Association of America MVP award, a group of 30 writers decide who takes home the prestigious award. But 30 people's decisions are not truly indicative of the whole story. And at the end of the day, there's only one MVP. The MVP award has turned into the wins above replacement award. And if the season were to end right now, then by that logic, Mookie Betts would be MVP. But as the famous saying goes, there are three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. One metric by itself is not indicative of value, which is subjective in and of itself. It's the bigger picture. And right now, the bigger picture is as blurry as they get. Regardless of who wins the actual award, one thing is certain. We, as baseball fans, all win. So who do I think will be MVP? If you were to ask me right now, I think Mookie Betts will win the MVP award in the National League. Of course, I want Acuna to win because he's produced a season the likes of which we have never seen before, and obviously because I'm a Braves fan. But players from bigger markets are, by and large, going to get the lion's share of attention. Advantage? Betts. He's won one MVP before, and it looks like the stars are aligning for him to overtake Acuna and be the 2023 NL MVP. Now it's your turn. Who do you think will be the NL MVP? Chime in down below and drop a like if you enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.